G'day and welcome to the Infronters. I'm XQ, joined by my partner in crime today, Grid. How you doing, mate? Just getting over the uh, Rona, yeah? Oh, I'm, I'm still getting over the Rona. Mm. I, well, I, I used to rejoice in being Novid. Mm. Um, but unless, uh, alas. Mm. It knocks you for six. That's right. what I'd say. All right, before we get started then, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you want to see future videos from us. It is the best way you can help out our channel. Mm. And thank you very much for those of you that do so. All right, Absolutely. with that today, um, we are recording this in advance because I'm going to be away. Um, but this is a one that we kind of haven't really ever touched. We, we've done ones like no. the worst ships to buy and things like that, but we thought we'd... Maybe it's a fairly obvious one. And, and and I guess, like, I can already tell people in the comments are going to know probably what the top two or three are from us already. But, but look, but if people don't know what the top two recommendations are yeah. of ships to buy, they don't know us or they haven't watched anything we've done. Yeah, so maybe this is for those people. Um, but I'm sure people taking bets, you wouldn't make much money if this was like a horse race, put it that way. So, yeah. We do have a runner-up, though, so I think we'll start with that one, Algrid, if, if you're cool with it, and we'll, we'll kick it over. Yep. So we're going to be doing this all on the screen here today. So uh, number 11 is yep. the Redeemer. Uh, uh, notable runner-up. Notable yes. runner-up is Paul's favourite ship. Yes. Execute's favourite ship. Uh, Execute's like... least favourite ship. It's probably one of my favourite combat ships. It's not my favourite ship. I do um, like it as a ship. No, your, your, your favourite ship is actually a Reclaimer, isn't it? That is... That is correct. Um, but this mm. is one of Execute's favourite ships. It is definitely a great combat ship for, for groups. It, mm -hmm. it has good firepower. Um, great in the game for... right now. It's really yeah. good for those bounty hunting missions. Um, it can literally take... You can take a th crew of three and you can totally destroy a hammerhead right now. It kind of shows how bad of a place the hammerhead is in right now. Mm. Hopefully that all changes, but yeah. yeah. Um, but at present, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good ship for... Uh, group combat or group group activity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's a good ship to have. Uh, it's also scheduled um, to get modularity as well. It's the test mm. bed on the um, the funding goals for the example of modularity. Um, John Crew was last heard saying that it's most likely going to get its original version of the ship right now in its current um, layout it is a long range escort and they were saying that it's going to be more of a short range dropship module the other one we're kind of expecting is a cargo module which would also allow it to take bounty hunting modules so this would be a good bounty hunting ship in fact it's probably one of the best bounty hunting ships if that that actually all ends up panning out so yeah yeah um really good at killing yep. other ships below it um and above so yeah it's it's quite a good all-rounder um i think it's yeah just just one of the best combat ships at the moment especially on the lower end because uh, it punches up as well and uh, yep. combat ships that punch up are not too common the other one is actually on this list though yeah the the other ship that i which we haven't got on the list and you're gonna you're gonna hate me for this mm -hmm. which is a compact which i think is a an easy competitor to this would be the retaliator um would... torpedo bomber really really mm. especially if you buy the base it's really mm. cheap and um, it enables you to do those bounty missions, but you need more crew. And so, and that's why I would um, argue it's probably not on the list because it, it's not and, in the best place right now. And uh, the, the other uh, thing we should have said at the start too is this is uh, this is list is current of you know uh, would you yeah. say patch nineteen point one twenty twenty three, yeah. and so it will change obviously. Um, and if 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 we have to, we'll, we'll yeah. do another one of these and update that for you guys. Yeah. Mm. So, the retaliate is up there. Mm. I think it. I think just for those crew, those crew reasons, it just gets it just gets pipped at the post by the yep. by, by the Redeemer for, for honourable mention. Mm. All um, right, number ten. So that's our uh, extra one out of the way. Number ten is the Odyssey. Now this one might be a bit of a weird one for some people, um, but the reason we picked the Odyssey for value um, is right now it's the same price as the Carrick. So you can't pick the Carrick based on value. Um, and I, for me, you would buy this and you would earn down to a Carrick. Um, and, and, yeah. and that was Algrid's question, wasn't it, when we were talking about this, when I suggested yeah, we, we, we were discussing this and, but, you know, the Carrick's still pretty good. And, and they're both, and they're both explorers. They both do, they both have a really good role mm -hmm. in, in our, in our assumption. They're different roles of exploration. Yeah. But the clincher, is that this is a capital ship. Yeah. And being the same price, 
it, it kind of becomes the obvious choice because you can yeah. earn down and it's going to be a lot harder to earn from the character up to this than down the other way so um, yeah. yeah and i and i often look at i often look at ships and look at what other things come with them like mm. the thing i like about one of the things i really like about the character is not only the things it can do mm. and it's more, and, and the, the versatility it's got but also the fact it's got an ursa and yep. c8 Yep. This doesn't have a C8 and it doesn't have an Ursa, but mm. it does have a garage, so you can put mm. a vehicle in it. And it does have a larger hangar, so you can put bigger ships in mm. it. So that, again, that just it'd, pulled it up. It'd be a different story if you could still get the Carrick at the original $350 price. It was a bargain back then. Um, but I think yeah. half the reason for the price increase is the fact that it does come with the Pisces and the Rover. You know, for me, that almost puts it up $100. Um, and, if there was a version you could buy without those... Yeah, then this might be and, a different story as, and don't as well. The, don't forget the Carrick also has the um, the repair drones and and all the drone ability as well. So, yep. um, it does have it does have a lot going for it. But when you compare it mm -hmm. price wise against the capital ship, that yep. does has a similar role, and can do the port of a ship, a larger ship mm -hmm. than the Carrick can, and have the same vehicle support. Yeah. No, there's no competition at that point. All right, number nine is the Polaris. Probably in no surprise, this is the other ship I was talking about that punches up. Um, I think this also potentially falls into the bounty hunting vein, uh, knowing that you can dock with it um, and it's got a brig in it. Um, so you can land your smaller ship in it or you can dock said smaller ship uh, with this ship and transfer people across. I think it's the smallest capital ship in the game. And because of that, I also think it'll be one of the most popular capital ships in the game. And that's not to say that we won't get other ships like this. In fact, I would argue, our grid that the Odyssey is in the same class as this. Yeah, They're, they're relatively was, the same size. I was about to say, I actually think the Odyssey and it are probably going to be roughly the same size, end up being roughly the same size. Mm. We know the hangers yep. have been turned to metric and they've both got the same size hanger. Mm. Uh, we know that this has also got um, a garage type ramp so mm. you can take stuff in the ramp um, they're very similar in that sense mm. the difference is this is a combat ship and the odyssey is an explorer and there's probably going to be a, a, like at least one more corvette coming and that might change it all again um, but yeah. as for right now this ship has a massive de deterrent with those 28 torpedoes which are just scarily large and yeah mm. each one of them costs roughly the price of an avenger itself to fire um or, or buy rather i should say and then you know the yep. ability to shop uh like support other um fighters and rotate them few and resupply them is really really strong um and, and this is basically a hunter killer or a seeker and destroyer it's it's got really yep. good scanners on it a lot, a lot of people have floated the idea of exploring it i don't think it's the best ship to explore and obviously because of the combat stuff but um it definitely yep. can see further than most ships to find its target and then um the literal line they use is the tip of the spear so it's like a yep. thrusting spear into attack and then straight out again um and if people are looking at it in terms of being a a long range explorer it doesn't fit with the mm. in my opinion in the way it was being designed in law it's been designed as a as kind of the you know mm. along with the civilian defense force type type ship as being a flagship for mm. local system defense yeah and so yeah it's got range but it's it's not that long range if you're after a long range explorer of that class go the odyssey mm. like seriously yeah um anyway um it's also being uh, gone into white box phase. So this thing is moving along in the ship pipeline. So hopefully it'll be with us soon. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, um, really, really am. It's, it's been a long time coming. So, yep. yeah. All right. Uh, that was number nine. We're on to number eight. Uh, the Orion, another RSI ship, uh, this time moving yep. in, into industry. Um, the Orion is, how do I put the Orion? Um, capital minor. Like I think that kind of covers it. And, and really big. <laughs> This thing has doubled in size uh, from its original conception. It used to be $325, and then when it doubled in size, they put it up to $575. So it's slightly uh, cheaper than the Odyssey and the Carrick at the moment. Um, but, yeah, it's just going to be one of those workhorses that for its size, you're getting a lot of ship. Um, yeah. and, and I think it's definitely going to increase in, in value, um, and I think that's kind of going to be a, a running theme today, actually, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Yeah. It's one of those ships that we don't, you know, it has grown in size. Mm. It may grow a little bit more, we never know. Um, mm. But it certainly, it certainly did double in size. It's certainly going to be, it's a ship, mm. but it's going to be that 
it is a top tier mining vessel. Um, yep. No, it can't land on planets, mm -hmm. but it will it will eat asteroids for breakfast. Um, I, I think with them working on things like the Polaris two, things like this are probably now mm. more likely to be coming sooner than later. But well, we haven't yeah. heard anything on this ship in. I think it must be in a long time. 16, 17, 20, you know, 2016, 2017. Yep. So it's been it's been quite a number of years, and we um, probably going to be a little while yet before we hear anything. So yeah, but um, yep. long term investment, which is some some of the reasons why these bigger ships are. Um, you know, you pay less now and they're going to go up in value quite a bit. So, yeah. Now, I think our next one is going to surprise people. Mm -hmm. um, you reckon? Yeah. Well, it, it's not something we would normally go. It, it is a... Um, it's under our usual Celia Fighters type price. Mm. Um, it, this is for value, though. This is this is a value proposition episode. And it is I, right. I, I think at $100, if this is the only ship you have, um, I think it is exceptionally good value. I think this would set anyone up um, to play the game extremely well. Um, if I had my mm. time over again, like I was coming in the game again tomorrow and I was recommending to a friend or, or recommending to myself, you know, if I was able to talk to myself, I would say just get this and that's all you need. You know? if, if, you're after, if you are after a multi-cruise ship, uh, and we've often said this, you know, mm. it, um, there are smaller fight, the smaller ships are used for starting, but this really is the first multi-cruise ship it is got two to two players yep. it works really well it's got cargo it's got it it's got the beds it's got the ability to walk around mm -hmm. it is a workhorse it's got good firepower it's got good missile loadout yep um and it's cheap it, it is easily the best all-round ship in the game as right of right now like it can mm. do everything um you know you know it can even put a rock miner in the back and do mining i guess when i say everything it can't do salvage i've just realized it can't do salvage but yeah. it's also due very shortly to get uh tractor beams as well which is um well I, I, did, I did see someone had um put a rock mine in the back of a of a ship and was mining using the rock to do mining from inside their ship so there's no reason you couldn't do salvage well, when the same, they, well, the yeah, vein, hopefully so. when they get a salvage uh, vehicle, maybe you can. So, yeah, that's true. Um, but, mm. yeah. Really good value that's right now. That's the only thing you can't do. Yep. Yeah. It, is, it is a good value ship. Mm. All right. Um, the Merchantman nice. at number six. Um, this was an absolute steal if you could get it for the original $250 price. I still think now at its $650, it's still extremely good value. Um it, yeah, it, it's it's basically destined to go up quite a bit in price um, down the road. Um, it's essentially an eight ninety jump at six hundred fifty dollars, but it does shops instead of VIP. And I think shops yep. for me is a much more interesting uh, profession than VIP transport. But that's just me. I, it might might be different for other people, but for me, it makes us an incredibly good value ship for its size and. Uh, it's the other really interesting thing that I think increases its value in a really weird way is they've literally said this is going to be the most bespoke, bespoke ship that they make because mm. everything is custom. So if it's all bespoke, that means it requires more work. So that means if this is the yep. most worked on ship they ever made, you know what I mean? It, it, it processes that it's it, it's the most custom ship they've ever made. So therefore, it's the most interesting and unique yep. and rare, so to speak, if you catch my drift. Rare in terms of being bespoke. bespoke. Yeah. Not rare in the number we'll see. <laughs> no, 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 I think a lot. We'll see a lot of them. I think almost everyone yeah. has one. But if you're looking, if you're looking at this ship, if you bought it at the original price, you're you're on a steal. If you bought it around six fifty, you're still on a good deal because I yeah. reckon this is going to go up to around an eight ninety pricing. And that's not even talking um, about war bond CCs, and that goes across everything we're talking about today. Yeah. Like if you can bring those numbers down even more with war bond CCs, they become even better value. We're just talking yeah. full price here today as well, so that's another yeah. thing. So yeah. Um, I think this ship is going to no. be one of the most popular cargo ships in the entire game. Um, still able to go down a planet. Um, you, you know, one of the other ships we looked at today that Algrid brought up and uh, and we looked at was the Privateer, but you kind of can't recommend the Privateer based on value. It's it's no. literally the well, second well, most... We started looking at the... It's the second yeah. most expensive ship in the entire game. So, mm. Yep. All right. Uh, anything you want to add about that, Agrid? You didn't really say too much. No, no, I, but I think this the next one is, again, going to be a surprise to people. All right, I'll let you talk about this one then. The Drake Carter. I know, I know, both people I know, I, I'm, I'm not a Drake mm. fan, and we've got two Drake ships in this list. Yep. 
but the cutter is a great starter ship. It retails as a standalone ship at $45. As a starter pack, it's $60 mm. uh, US. Um, it is a great, sh- it is probably in, in if you're after a, a base starting ship, I think this is better than an Aurora or a Mustang because it gives yeah. you that ability to walk around the ship. Yep. It's got the internal cargo. It's got it's got the little water closet. Mm. It's got the bed. It's got... It's um, basically got the two things that they both have, but then combined. So it's got the bed yeah. of the Aurora, and if you take the Mustang Beater, it's kind of got the, the living quarter stuff as well. I guess the Mustang yeah. Beater is kind of similar, but the fact that you can put vehicles and stuff in the back of this, it beats both of them because of that. So it actually really elevates this as a, as a starter. It's as essentially like, um, you know, a poor man's Avenger, so to speak. Because well, even, if you, even if you look at the price of a... The, the Aurora starter pack. The Aurora mm. starter pack is $45, same as the Mustang Elf mm. is $45. So for $15 extra, you get mm. a ship that's got a walkable interior. Yep. The downside of, of this over the Aurora MR and the Mustang Alpha is its weaponry. It's only yep. got the two uh, size two and it, uh, guns at the front. It does make it break but, that, um, that Drake mold, doesn't it? You know, but it breaks the, um, Drake mold mm. because this is the most armored starter ship. Yep. So um, it goes both ways, you know, but this is a great, a great ship to start with. Um, I think, I think that you kind of highlight there that a lot our grid, like it, it, this is from also kind of leans a bit more into the industrial player base because of that. If you wanted more combat, I'd, I'd say lean more into the Aurora or the, the uh, Mustang. Um, yep. But if you're, if you're leaning a bit more towards industry, this is the way to go. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was, right. at, I was looking at pricing of I was looking at the pricing of this and the Aurora. The Aurora CL or the Clipper is the same price as, as this as a standalone ship. Yeah. So I, I can't go but I can't go past this. In fact, I upgraded my my uh, Zero to Hero character, my my one that's only got one ship. I upgraded her Aurora mm-hmm. to the to the to the cutter because I could get it for the same price. So it was just it was nuts. Yeah. So I don't know. It makes me hope they go back to some of the starters and polish them up a bit mm. maybe we get a whole rework oh, who knows we just have to wait and see what happens yep. again right now really good value all right yep, indeed the next one uh my favorite ship the reclaimer um capital salvage uh it's basically akin to what the orion is for mining this is for salvage um and it is yeah just uh you can do it in game right now just the whole stripping but a lot more to come later on in the year um and it's mm. big it's a big ship for what you get um four hundred dollars um i'm surprised it really hasn't gone up in price quite honestly yeah um I, yeah. I i would have to agree I'm, I'm surprised it hasn't gone up in price i would expect if it's going to go up in price when we get the the munching and the claw working mm-hmm. that's when it's going to go through the roof yeah. um yeah possible. or Probably when possible. they finally are, or when they finally have to supply the cutter yeah but it's supposed you know whatever the cutter is mm. but I could see that being a, an impact on the price as well. So, yeah. So, yeah. I know it's it's definitely a different vibe from Aegis, an in, industrial mm. vibe from Aegis. I think the only other industrial ship they've got is the uh, Vulcan, which we don't have yet. Um, and I expect it to have similar aesthetics to this. Um, very Nostromo. If you're into aliens, I was, I was just about to say this also, if, if you're an aliens fan, this is Nostromo to a T. Yeah. The fit you get in there is. Nostromo all over. Yep. And um, yeah, salvage is uh, quite an interesting profession. So again, might be a bit niche, but again, great value. All right, coming down to the top three now. So another one that might be a bit of a surprise for people, but we do recommend this ship a hell of a lot here on this channel to uh, new players. Um, And that's the Avenger Titan. And I think we could also check uh, check the Stalker potentially in there now too. I think they're almost the same price now. I'd have to double check that. But um, yeah, it's it's just stood the test of time. This ship's been around for such a long time, and mm. the, the only thing that has remotely come close is the cutter. And if they'd left it at forty five dollars, the cutter would be in this position. But because yeah. it's only a ten dollar difference, you're essentially like taking what Algrid said before and what I said. Where so you've kind of got the industry of um, the cutter, but it, the cutter's got so much less guns. If you were to kind of take better guns and slap them on the um, abilities of the cutter that's this ship it's like almost like combining the 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 best of all the starters together 
when you look at this ship, it's ten dollars more than a car, so fifty five dollars standalone. Mm. Um, it's got better weapon, uh, better more missile, more more better weapons than a than a cutter. Miss more missiles than a cutter because the cutter has none. Mm. Uh, I think it's double the cargo of a cutter. Yep. It's still got the bed. It's still got, I think, the toilet. I can't remember if it's got a toilet or, or mm. the shower booth. That's like, I, I've just gone blank. Doesn't but, Actually, I don't think it does have a toilet now you mention it. So that's something a cutter does have over it. It does. But I think this also, mm. but I think this has a small kitchen it or does. a little cooking bay, yeah. So which the cutter doesn't have. So you've got mm. this six to one half and a half and nine. So the cutter, gets a, the cutter gets a long range ability that this doesn't have essentially which, with the toilet. Which, yeah. which is a, I, I, I think it's quite humorous because mm. I remember there was a joke about mm. the cutlass after it got its rework, but the mm. toilet bay was removed and it was, you know, they just have a bucket. Well, mm. the cutter. Well, maybe that's what you get with the Avenger. You get an Avenger doggy bag, essentially. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you just stop at the latest moon on your way to, <laughs> off to where you're going. But, but yeah. But the penguin, as it's as it's affectionately called, um, it it is a great ship, and and um, its price and what it's got. If mm. you're after a solo ship and you, that can fight and do pretty much every mission bar mm. salvage or mining, mm. uh, you're looking at the cutter. Mm. Well, you're looking at the cutter, and then the Avenger, followed by the cutlass. I might um, give a notable mention here, actually, because I've just thought of one that we could have possibly slotted in around here, and that would be the 315P. Same price as yeah. this, but if you want to, again, lean more into cargo, 315P. Yep. It essentially gets a, a tractor yeah. beam, and it gets 12 SC of cargo. So double yep. the cargo of this, but you kind of lose the guns. Yeah. So you're swapping those guns for cargo. Yep. And the other thing with the 315P is it was always built mm. as the Explorer, so what it's got in exp exp for exploration that makes it a better explorer mm. I, i'm not sure but it's supposed yeah. to have other stuff mm. besides a tractor beam that would make it better yeah. for exploring so yeah that would have been another uh option to put in there as a, an honorable mention but yeah. hey we didn't think of it at the time no it's all good that's i make it up as i go along don't i agree right uh sure do, number sure number two the crucible i think no surprises what number one is going to be uh but yeah um no. The the one of two remaining ships uh, yet to be from the old metrics uh, to be brought up to speed. It, it definitely has to increase in size. Um, it basically is one of the most underrated ships in the game from a profession standpoint. People are screaming for medical, but nobody ever se seems to think about repairing your ships because we're just not yep. going out yet. We're not going and, out into the black enough. Uh, but with all that and, coming, it'll it'll be a mainstay. And if you think of it, repair is medical for ships. So if you're into medical gameplay, your engineers are basically your medics for your ship. That's it. Uh, and, and you're going to need both. And yeah. this is the piece mm. de resistance. Mm. Um, I can remember when we, we did our um, ship scrutiny in this, mm. we had to do a second version because there was just yep. so much we, we actually missed. Absolutely. We covered a lot in the first version and we, and we went, crap, we missed this, mm. this, this, and this. Um, it's not just re um, repair either. Like it's more advanced no. repair than other ships, but it also can do logistics. So it's it's going to be able to um, you know resupply ships and stuff like that as well. I don't, I, I you know you can obviously do that in something like the Polaris that we showed earlier, earlier or the Odyssey, but um, mm. the ability to repair at a much more efficient rate and resupply, I think that this is going to be. Yep. It's really weird. We go look at fleets and, you know, you can see these um, org fleets, actually, and you can see, you know, they might have 100 people in them and they've got, like, one crucible and it just doesn't add up. So it's yep. one of the ships we've pushed at, for quite a long time. And multiple capital ships. Mm. And, you know, like, oh, we've got two two Kraken, three Javelin. Yep. And, I think and you go, how many, how many crucibles you got? Oh, none. Mm. I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Agrid. That, that this basically is if you've got a, a large capital ship, um, it, it is pretty much an, a required upgrade. Like if if your oh. Kraken or Idris breaks down in the middle of nowhere, you're going to be really beholden to someone else. So you want your org to have one or yourself to yep. have one so you can get yourself out of uh, trouble. Yeah, you, you, I, I often say to people, if you've if you've got a capital ship, you want one of these, mm -hmm. um, at least at least one, um, so you can at least you know, mm. get a get a friend to to be able to bring one out. You know, so yep. I've got I've got a couple. I'll I will put them on. My, I'll at least one will be on loan to the org. So yep. if I get in trouble, they can bring one out too. Mm. I know that we've got a few in our org because I know a couple of people, have, a couple of others have got them. But yep. I I still think we don't have enough. No, um, agreed. Um, 
it was on the roadmap for the end of last year, so hopefully it means that it's sooner rather than later. We'll just mm. have to wait and see, though. All I, right. I can remember when we were doing when we were doing that skip scrutiny. People saying, "Oh, it, it can't do drones. It, it can't do resupply." And one of the things we discovered as we were doing doing ship scrutiny, it's got four drones. It's yeah, drone control. So it's it's got yeah. absolutely everything to do with the repair, which is crazy. Yeah, um, and it's also got the rotisserie re restaurant, uh, and apparently yep. that might be going away, but we'll wait and see. Wait now that was that was something I did see, mm -hmm. um, the rotisserie rotating bridge. Mm -hmm. In one of the uh, things they said, it was so that it could be operated by a single crew. Yeah, um, they origi well, I, I, originally I, thing though too is a lot of, in a lot of the shots you see it flying with the scarab forward. The other original yeah. concept was is actually that the scarab is at the back. Yep. Um, because back in the day, they thought as they were flying along, it would be easier to land, but things have changed. So it may not rotate, need to rotate anymore because the back would literally just be where the engines come out and then basically you fly forward with the scarab. So if it doesn't rotate anymore, it's like you said, they they, um, they wanted it to for less crew, but also um, because they um, were worried about how it was yep. going to fly and stuff. But things have evolved a lot since this was concepted. Yep. And so... Who knows what it'll end up looking like. But again, it is uh, at $350, which is still the original concept price. Yeah, hasn't gone up. That is what is at number two. It is, mm. we know it's going to grow. We know what it can do. It's still a P, original and, and, concept And price. it can even repair itself, ironically. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Number one, uh, as no surprise, surprise to surprise, anyone. Surprise, surprise. The Miss Endeavor. <laughs> um, this thing has, is it the same price as the point as the Crucible? Um, it has to grow quite considerably to to work. Mm. Now, whether it grows in length or width or height is a whole nother ball game now with the whole series coming in and stuff like that. Mm. But it's definitely got to get bigger to fit into the things they've said that this is going to do. Just the um, the example, I'll let you give the example of the Kraken. Um, yeah. And you've gone quiet on me. And you're going to come back in a flurry. And he's gone. All right. So basically, uh, on the so crack, the thing with the crack, and if you look at the the large, I'm you're waiting. there. You're there. Go. Go ahead. Okay. I was just waiting for the voice to come back, but uh, yep. Go ahead. <laughs> well, not the what's the picture. So if you look at the crack, and the crack, and has these three small pads on the one side and a large pad on the other side. That large pad is big enough for two uh, cutlasses. The landing pad or the landing hanger of the Endeavour was rated at for two cutlass reds. Mm -hmm. So that size of that cutlass or that Kraken landing pad gives you an idea of the size of the hanger that this thing needs to have. Yeah, and if you make that middle section roughly as big as that on the Kraken, um, it makes this like at least 400 metres long. Mm -hmm. um, and it, or it's around 420, I think. Um, yep. Star Jump Grim worked out himself. So if you kind of do that, it makes it the second longest ship in the game with the Javelin being the, the longest at 480. And that's the big, they've come out and said that that's the biggest player ship you'll be able to own. So, yeah. um, but I, I think the secret to fixing that is making this thing go sideways and up because it is a yeah. space lock ship. It does not need to be like ridiculously long so they can add that width to it. And I, I don't think it's going to add too much issue to, uh, the ship itself, and I think that might be the out we get with this ship, so to speak. And, and some of the other things they could do to to solve those issues is even do a bit of that telescoping, yep. whole body type thing that Absolutely. they've done with the hull to help with those modules fitting. That so would, that'd be great if you didn't have the modules on it and it could like actually kind of fold up a bit, container up and be mm. even smaller. Mm. But we we have no idea what they're going to do with this ship. We yeah. know it's it's always been one of the last ships because mm. it was had so much and was so big. We know that it's. We know that it's still three hundred and fifty dollars yep. uh, for the base. I think for um, the price, though, it's the gameplay that you get. You just get more gameplay with the modules on this ship than anything else. This is the module master. It literally has a module master yeah. set. Um, you, you've got a hospital. You've got um, scientific research. You've got general <laughs> research. You've got farming. You've got uh, super colliders. You've got cargos. You've got yeah. cargo bays. You've got fuel extensions, and it goes on and on and on and yeah. on. You've got extra crew. I think there's mm. even extra crew cabins. So yep. 
Um, you can you can you can detach the cab at the front and fly into the um, what do they call that the corona of the, the sun, corona of the sun. You know things like that. So you can go hide in the corona of the sun where other people can't go. So it, it's even an explorer, um, which is just ridiculous. It just does so much, um, and it really it, does it, tap into that science vein. Um, it's probably yeah. the premier science ship at the moment. Well, I think I think that is it's it, the, even if you look at the the agricultural pod, they were all that uh, sciencey aspect. Mm -hmm. You've got the telescope uh, as one of the attachments, so you can actually do long range scanning and yeah. and and send off. You know, the idea is you use your telescope, spot something, and send an explorer off to investigate that thing you mm -hmm. found. Um, yeah, it's 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 the Swiss Army knife of Star Citizen. It's, it's but at 350 bucks per base yep. and all the things it offers, that's why this is our always mm. um, the Church of the Crucible and cult of the cult of the endeavor. Mm. And that's probably why. Mm. All right. Well, with that, then, that has been Algorithms and Minds' top 10 best ships to buy in Star Citizen from a value proposition. Um, and I would like to know below what would your top 10 ships be? Um, and you know, uh, have we gone to crazy town, Algrid? What would you kind of like to hear from people below in the comments? Yeah, we know that these are not necessarily the top, the best ships. We've lost him again. All right, all right, with that, then, um, the others. Ooh, I'm back, I think. Yep, cool, go for it. So, so yeah. We know that these may not be everyone, but we do think they're the best value for what they are. So um, what are your 10 best value value for money ships you could get in game? Um, we'd love to hear that. Yep. All right. If you uh, like this type of content, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And thank you to those that go that extra mile on Patreon, mm. Twitch, and YouTube memberships and all that type of thing. So yeah, thank you very much. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, he's been our grid. He's been executed, and we're out of here. Catch Take you care. on the next one. Bye-bye.